We're now going to go into our next segment. I'm very pleased to welcome it. It's all about uh, celebrating learning disability and inclusion. This feature is brought to you by CTEC Plus Work and Health Programme in partnership with the Department of Work and Pensions and the European Social Fund, plus Learning Disability Services and Project Search, supported by Plymouth City Council, City College Plymouth and the University Hospital Plymouth NHS Trust, Health Works for Cornwall, in partnership with Cornwall Development Company, Cornwall Council and European Social Fund. This next hour is specifically targeted at employers. We are going to have a people panel discussion all around inclusive employment and then we have a lovely conversation between an employer and employee discussing the benefits of employing inclusively. I am now pleased to welcome uh, Maurice Mackey from CTEC Plus, Stephen Grantham from Plus, Tom Gleeson from Next Steps, and Amanda Horton from the University Hospitals Plymouth NHS Trust. Hello, everyone. Good Hello. afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm just thinking. I'm really jealous. I just want to go and put my sofa now out in my garden. I think this is a fabulous <laughs> idea. It is lovely out here. I won't lie. It's lovely while the tree is still giving me some shade. It slowly creeps in from the left, so I'm safe. But poor Ross, who who you can't see, obviously, he's, uh, it slowly creeps in and slowly creeps in. So I'm hoping we can end the day before he gets roasted. We'll soon see. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, how are you all today? I hope you're keeping well and you're keeping cool. Good, well, thank you. A little bit hot. Yeah, yeah. a little bit warm. All good. Lovely, good, lovely. <laughs> now, can I start uh, with you, Maurice? You work at CTEC Plus. Could you tell us exactly the work that you do? Okay, so um, as, as you said, my name's Maurice. I'm what's called the regional manager. So I support the team um, in the southern part of, of the county. So I work across Cornwall, Devon and Somerset. And the aim of the Work and Health Programme is to support people with um, in, with health issues or barriers to, to employment. So we, we get referrals from the job centres and, and then our role is to look at those individuals, look at the barriers that they may present with and then come up with a strategy and a plan to help those individuals address some of the issues that they may present with and support them back into employment and, and support them to stay in employment. Because obviously that's the key. It's about getting a job and keeping a job. Fantastic. Oh, quite a wide area you're dealing with. So a lot of work to have to do there. Um, I believe you're going to host this discussion, Marie. So if that's OK with you, I'll hand things over to you. I am. Yeah. And, and thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for turning up. So um, we were kind of discussing that, that I, I've kind of done this before. So um, this makes life a little bit easier. But um, we have some some novices here with Steve, Amanda and Tom. So I've promised I'm going to be really, really kind and not kind of th throw any curveballs at them. So we're going to start to, to talk to first to Steve. So welcome, Steve. Welcome to mm. Chaos TV. I believe this is your first time with us. It is indeed. Yes. So thank you for having me on Chaos TV. Looking Brilliant. forward to this afternoon. So, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do within CTEC Plus, then, Stephen? So, what's your role and what contract yeah, is it that you're working on? So, I work for CTEC Plus, but the provision I work on is called HealthWorks Cornwall. Um, and as the name implies, we're a Cornwall based provision. We have a team operating in the south southeast area. So, that's kind of St. Austell, um, that corner of Cornwall. We have a coast to coast team, kind of Truro down to um, Falmouth, that area. Um, and we also have a specialist LDD learning difficulties team, which covers the whole of the county. So quite a wide remit. Okay. Um, my, and my role within the provision. So basically what I do, we have our change coaches on the provision and I work with our work ready participants and I work them with employers as well. And I try and find them the right opportunity to move them forwards into the job market. Uh, we take a very holistic approach with the people on our programme, so it's not about finding them any old job, it's really matching their needs and aspirations to employers, and then hopefully kind of making the two things meet together. Um, the other thing I work on as well, if um, any of the people on programme need reasonable adjustments or access to work, then obviously I have conversations with them and the employer about the recruitment process and try and make it suit their needs. Mm -hmm. So really just to smooth that transition into the world of work. Excellent. Sounds sounds a really interesting job role. It is. It's very rewarding. And the other piece of my role, which is really interesting, I try and encourage employees to become disability confident. So it's really raising awareness of LDD issues and encouraging diversity and inclusion. So yep. it's a very rewarding role all around. I get to meet lots of interesting people. Okay, so 
have you got like any employers that that, that you've worked with who who you really who've embraced the culture of having an inclusive um, employee base? And you know, what is it that they do that, that makes them a little bit different from other employers, Steve? Um, I think what they do, it's really about being willing to talk about LDD barriers and being aware of those issues and just willing to recognise that people with LDD barriers have just as much to offer as those who you would probably term neurotypical or or to use a, a not, probably a not very appropriate word, but I can't think of another one, normal, if you yeah. like. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really just the fact that they will encourage openness and dialogue and they're willing to recognise that everyone has something to offer, which is really important. OK, so have you got kind of any favourite examples of, of customers who you supported on the programme who've gone into employment? Yeah, there's one recently, actually, which is a really good example. Um, and this person had a quite significant life changing injury and it put some quite significant barriers up into their um, progression back into work. They really wanted to work in retail, but I'm sure everyone knows, like with most big employers in the retail sector, you have to do online applications, lots of form filling. You can't actually talk to someone about your application. It's really difficult. Yeah. And they were, they were getting nowhere, basically. So um, I literally went into a big store in Truro, had a conversation with the store manager, and they agreed to see her just on a very kind of informal basis. They asked her to come in for interview. Um, we talked about her barriers and adjustments and then within two days they offered her a job and she starts this week which is amazing she's absolutely over the moon really pleased um, and the employer is just such a shining example really of what people can do if they kind of listen and engage if that makes sense so that's a really really good result excellent so what's she going to be doing within the store tom within the store yeah. Um, so she'll be working in the evenings. She'll be replenishing yeah. stock, ticketing, labelling, and kind of doing the um, replenishment part of the retail process, yeah. which absolutely suits her down to the ground. It's exactly what they wanted. Brilliant. Okay. So does that mean that they've kind of job carved a little bit of a role, Steve, for her to so that you know she's not on the till? So have they taken yeah. away bits of the job that that might be a little bit more difficult? They haven't taken away bits of the job because this role was in existence anyway, but it's okay. really about matching her, matching her to this role right. rather than trying to put her on the tills or working hours which didn't suit her. Mm -hmm. uh, because there were other roles on offer which were really early starts and that wouldn't have suited her needs. So it's really about recognising what her barriers were, what her requirements were, what she could fit in with and matching those to the employer. So it was really a win-win situation. It was great. Brilliant. So, well, you're obviously doing an amazing job um, and you're, you're probably getting that real kind of feel good factor of seeing people kind of blossom and develop and flourish and, and, and kind of take their next step in life, really. And it, it's it's an amazing feeling, isn't it, Steve? To, it is. It's to kind fantastic. Of that. It's really rewarding to feel that actually, you know, the work we're doing, we're actually making a difference yeah. and helping change people's lives. It's um, really amazing. And it really fits in, obviously, with the, our company's strap line, hashtag no one left behind, because people aren't left behind. You see them moving forwards and progressing. And it's really wonderful to see. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time um, this afternoon, Steve. So we're going to move oh, forward welcome. to Tom. Um, and it's, it's quite nice to to kind of pick up on the hashtag no one left behind because I know a little bit about next steps that they're, they're up in my my patch up in North Devon so good afternoon Tom and welcome to the chaos TV hi yes yeah, thanks for having me on so can you tell us a little bit about next steps Tom and what is it that next steps do uh, yes yeah, so the next steps development we're a local charity we work mainly in the North Devon area uh, we offer training and employee opportunities for individuals with learning and physical disabilities. Uh, so we have opportunities in a variety of departments. Um, it's kind of put me on the spot because I've got to remember all the stuff we do. Uh, so we do um, woodworking, so we build furniture in our workshop. We offer retail, so we've got a charity shop in Barnstall, one in Biddeford. Uh, we do finance and administration in our offices, uh, graphic design. Uh, catering, so we have a couple of cafes and a canteen. We do farming, where we have two farms uh, just in Barnstable. Um, horticulture, we've just started up a horticulture project in Biddeford. Uh, mechanics as well, we've got two garages, one in Barnstable, one in Biddeford. Um, 
and I'm just trying to think what else we've got. Oh, fabrication as well, which we've just started in our workshop. Wow. Even I didn't realise that you had such a diverse range of opportunities on offer there, there Tom. That's pretty mind-blowing, isn't it? We have grown massively within the last year. I mean, I only started with them a year ago. Uh, and when I started, we were based in Barnstable. We had sort of four or four services going on there. So I think now we've got seven in Barnstable, four in Biddeford. So, yeah, it's been a really good year. Excellent stuff. So just kind of picking up on the furniture side of things then, Tom. So what is it that you make and, and who do you sell the items to? Um, so furniture wise, I mean, we do take orders in. So there's people that pop in and like sort of put orders into us. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our main ones, we work with a company called True Student. Um, and they have six universities around the country. And we supply three, four hundred bits of furniture at a time to each university. Uh, so when I started last August, I think it was about September time, uh, they asked me to come along and see the Manchester University delivery. So I was kind of in the office for the first month. Yeah. Didn't see much going on. Um, and then went with six of our, our students up to Manchester with, I think, 420 bits of furniture. Wow. A brand new uh, building at Salford. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. It's such a good project because you see the boys, they bring them, the, the sort of the wood comes in, uh, sanding it all down, and then the sort of finished product that goes to be delivered, they also deliver it. They carry it up all the stairs, lifts. I think when we were at Salford, there was a lift, but it didn't work. So we had 15 oh, no. stairs to deliver a lot of the furniture. Um, but it's amazing. I spent most of my time just stood there taking photos of everything because I was just so amazed. I mean, the, the quality of the furniture is really good, but the, all the guys sort of working together and it's it's just amazing to see that they're, they're sort of being paid for, for doing this work. And some of them are, are oblivious to sort of how, how impressive this stuff is. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. True student uh, are really supportive of us. So like I say, I think we've got six universities now. Um, and yeah, it's a continuous cycle of like, we've had, I think, Liverpool University went out last month, so they're moving on, possibly Swansea, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the next university order is already being prepared, so. Wow, but that, that's some, that is some story, Tom, isn't it? It's just mind-blowing. It's, it's amazing. I'd like to say, I, I mean, I've worked in sort of disability care for 20 years around here, and I've always been on the side of supporting students, so things like using a saw, it would very much be... I'll show you how to cut the wood, you can paint it when we're finished. And then I walked into next steps, got shown around the workshop, and I said, oh, I like the look of the saw over there. I walked over to it, and one of the students said, I'll have to teach you how to use that first. So <laughs> I just went, yeah, cool, show me how it works. This is amazing. Absolutely. So it's a total role reversal to what I'm used to. Brilliant. So how does Next Step champion inclusive employment? So what is it specifically that, that Next Step do to really champion the employment of people with learning disabilities and, and people with disabilities? Um, so, yeah, we work with um, like sort of several um, referring agencies. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of places that are tasked with like supporting people with additional needs to get into employment. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with like local schools which is sort of mainstream schools and special education schools, um, local like library job clubs. Um, we have self-referrers come to us as well. Um, I think, oh, uh, probation service. So we work with probation service. So we've got oh, yeah. one community payback scheme that are, are helping clear our, our new site and benefit at the moment. Um, and it's kind of bringing people in with lots of different skills um, no matter what their age, what their background is, kind of working all together side by side and then like learning with each other. Brilliant. So what additional support do you give to your employees? Because I am aware that, you know, when people, when the individuals start, you do look at putting a really comprehensive support package in place. So what does that look like, Tom? Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we teach the individuals their roles. So um, along with the sort of employability and independence skills, um, we do we offer AQA certification as well. Um, so we kind of hold regular development meetings. Um, so we can look at sort of what people are working on and what they're working towards. Um, we also do like bespoke uh, AQA modules. So we've got um, the, the guy that runs with our AQAs can actually write specific stuff. So it's really person-centered. Um, 
So yeah, it kind of ends up building a portfolio that the guys that we support can be really proud of, and it, it kind of demonstrates their learning and achievements with us. Um, we do things like peer-to-peer mentors as well. So some of the guys that have been with us for a while that have kind of come through the system, they will then look out and look after the new guys that we've got coming in as well, which is really mm-hmm. nice to see. Um, and, and especially like for some of them, they've been through like the anxieties of coming into work themselves. So yeah. They know how it feels firsthand, so who better to teach the new guys that are coming in? Um, Absolutely. We you know, also like things that um, may be different to sort of, I don't want to say sort of mainstream work, but things like sort of giving the guys extra breaks so it helps with their concentration, so they, they, they might sort of break up the day a bit more, um, extra time to complete tasks. So what we may say, right, we're going to build 10 tables in a day, that might be fine for someone, but someone else might only be able to make four or five with some support. So it's, it's kind of working sort of person to person. Um, and the same with like our training as well. All our training that we offer for staff and students, that can be broken down into sort of smaller bite-sized pieces, uh, using simple language for some people as well. Um, using pictures for the guys, especially like in the workshop for tools and stuff. Um, things like timeouts for, for people if they're getting anxious and they, they want to go off and sort of calm down before coming back. Um, but I think also things like um, leniency and understanding like timekeeping. Um, for some of our guys, I know, especially the benefit site, we've only been there a few months. For some of our newer students, Turning up to start work at nine o'clock in the morning took a bit of time to work around, um, but it's been amazing. It's just like it's we're, we're all kind of learning together. It's really nice, and like I say, with the peer-to-peer part, like some of the guys that help each other out, it's really lovely to see. Um, so yeah, and then obviously as well things like access to work. We we do a lot of work with access to work, so we have a lot of our students come through that. Um, and that means we can job coach people, so they get like one-to-one support. Um, so yeah, it's um, yeah, all good. You know, you've spoken so passionately about what you do, Tom. It, it's it's amazing to hear. So, kind of on a final note, then. So, how can we inspire other employers to to, to have that kind of inclusivity um, and to look at? We tend to call you know, the group that you're supporting maybe untapped talent. So how do we get employers to recognise that there's, a, there's a, a group of individuals out there who really want to work, who can do an amazing job? And just hearing about some of the, the roles that the people are working on, you know, graphic design, admin, finance, these are really complex roles. So how do we get more employers to buy into this agenda, Tom? Um, I suppose, I mean, from us, we, we kind of recognise the abilities and qualities that individuals have to offer. So, um, I don't know, for example, like someone that might come to us that's got um, sort of inflexibility because of their autism, Mm -hmm. we might see someone that's really sort of methodical with like data entry. So, it would be perfect to work in our office. Um, So, we really kind of try and promote the contributions and skills that each individual can do. Um, We've got like, like I say, large contract with um, true students, that's like national university stuff that we do, and we provide furniture for them. Um, our logo goes on everything. People know the story of who we are and what we do. Um, it's really lovely because you get all these new students that start last September and they're all going into their, their new sort of halls of residence and taking photos of this wonderful furniture wow. and yeah. posting it all on social media and then we kind of get in touch oh, and say, oh yeah, you know, that's us, right? this is what we do. And it, it's lovely. We've had so many nice comments about like the quality of stuff we're doing and, and how good it is to to be working with these guys um but we social media is a big thing for us as well we've got a real good social media presence we promote everything that we do people kind of hear about us and learn about us um, there's a, a large global manufacturing company in um Barnstable and they've got like i think it's over 50,000 employees in like 50 different countries um and the Barnstable base have heard about us and asked us to come and provide their canteen services so wow. We've got students working in a canteen of like a, a huge global com- uh, company. So, um, yeah, it's nice. We've got like a real sort of diverse mix of uh, employees that manage to showcase their talents in various different places, like their strong work ethic. Um, and then, yeah, it's just uh, like, yeah, showing a bit of faith in employees, I think. Yeah. 
There's a lot of people out there with so much to offer, and they get sort of poo pooed early on in life. And I think, and I'm saying this from sort of next steps, um, we can provide them with that like next step. <laughs> Yeah, fabulous, fabulous name for a fabulous company, Tom. So, yeah. and it's just amazing to hear about how Next Steps has has blossomed and developed, and it's gone from like a little acorn to a massive oak. So, so well done to you and the team at Next Steps for all the commitment that that you're bringing and the customers that you're supporting. So, we're going to move on to Amanda, and Amanda is from Project Search, um, based down at, at Plymouth NHS Trust. So, Amanda, can you tell us what is Project Search? Hi Maurice. Um, so um, Project Search is a transition to work programme. Um, so it provides education and training um, for young people with a learning disability um, or autism. Um, the aim of the programme is to provide support to them as an individual um, in order for them to learn the skills and to gain experience in a, in a working environment um, which they can then use in order to, to both gain and keep paid employment in the future. Um, so, you know, they could be young people straight from school or college, and this is like their first um, experience uh, of a working environment. Um, and then as, as, as well as um, working um, in, a, in a working environment within the hospital, because I'm employed by um, Plymouth um, Hospitals NHS Trust, they also um, have an education element of it. So they spend four and a half hours of the day with us um, doing a job role, and then they go to the classroom for a couple of hours um, to also um, carry on with their, their education. Brilliant. So what department is it that you work in, in Amanda, in the hospital? So I'm the production services manager in the pharmacy department. So um, my area is responsible for primarily for the manufacture of chemotherapy um, preparations. But obviously the pharmacy as a whole um, is responsible for supplying medicines to the whole of, of the hospital. Brilliant. So how many interns have you had working with you within, within like the, the pharmacy department? Oh, well, we've had many within the pharmacy department. I don't know the exact number, but across the trust, um, in the 11 years that Project Search has been running, there have been 98 interns um, wow. over 11 years. So within the pharmacy, we usually have at least one or two interns um, every term. Um, we, we, you know, we really support support this project. So, so many of those um, have been through pharmacy. So I, I am going to go off piece a little bit here, Amanda. So the first time that you were approached to say, right, you, you're going to have a young person with a learning disability in your department to, to do some work experience on, on their internship. Did you have kind of any concerns or did you, did you have any worries? Um. I guess my main worry was probably how I could support this individual uh, and how as a team we could support um, an individual um, who may be nervous coming into the working environment for the for the first time. Um, so um, we approached that by um, giving them a one-to-one -one mentor um, mm -hmm. so that they always had somebody who they could go to um, who was going to be their confidant if they had any um, problems that they could speak to um, and also um, the interns um, gave us um, they all give us a personal statement um, mm -hmm. so that tells us um, sort of like what their learning style is any anxieties that they have about coming into the workplace so that we can make the adjustments um, for them before they even come into the department so that on their first day we've done everything that we can to make them feel comfortable um, when they walk through the door for the first time. Um, a, a bit like Tom said, really, it, it's maybe looking at their learning style. Mm -hmm. um, some individuals prefer things to be um, written down. Some people prefer a verbal communication. Um, some some require um, pictures. Um, and, and obviously, a pharmacy department, we're heavily regulated, so things do have to be done sort of like very methodically. So it's really important that, that we do get it right and make the, the individuals feel comfortable um, when they come in because it's important that they do think do do things in the in the right the right way yeah yeah 
Okay, so across um, the hospital, do you know how many um, young individuals have been recruited by the hospital as, as a result of the timing project search? Yeah, I believe in total 61 out of those 98 interns wow. have actually got um, paid employment. Um, and within pharmacy, we actually employ five um, individuals on full time permanent contracts who have gone through the project search internships. Wow. So do you know, are you aware of any other kind of roles that these young people have gone into? Yeah, so um, ac across the trust and um, they work um, in catering. So in the in the restaurant, um, supplying meals to both staff uh, and patients. Um, they work in portering sector. So, you know, logistics taking vital supplies um, around the hospital, dealing with, um, you know, the, the rubbish. Mm -hmm. um, within pharmacy, they do things like they, they deliver the medicines to the wards, making sure that the patients receive their medicines on time. They do portering duties. Um, within my department, um, we're actually training um, the individuals that we've um, employed to actually write worksheets and do labels for the chemotherapy preparations. They wow. do stock control. They, you know, the, 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 it's, it's a really wide ar array of roles that these um, young people you know do amazing so finally for you then have you got a favorite story of someone that's come through project search and, and that they've kind of blossomed and developed and, and gone into employment yeah I mean there are many I mean I think I every story is is a success because um the, the one that sticks out of the, in my mind is there was the one individual who came in extremely shy um, when we met him for the first time um, all of the communication was really done um, by the person who he who had brought him down to the department there was very little eye contact he he didn't you know he wasn't able to to make eye contact um, his responses were sort of like very much um, one word um, responses um, but he came to to us um, as an intern and, and really quickly showed um, that he had really, really good potential. Um, he was really hard working, he was very keen to learn. Um, we really tapped into to the talent that he had. He was really computer literate um and he basically never left our department because we were so impressed with with him as an intern and we didn't want to let him go again so um he stayed with us and got full time um employment as an ATO and now the the confidence that we can see in that individual he you know he's now very much part of the team he interacts with everybody within the whole team he's got really good suggestions and is just a really confident individual it, it's just amazing um you know in in a, in a few months how how that that person yeah blossomed as an individual so again i think you you're kind of reiterating what what tom is saying really is that actually if we put the right support in place and we think creatively about where young people or anybody with a learning disability or um you know who's neurodiverse who who actually the benefits that they can bring to to an employer um around the structure around the routine about the attention to detail about staying focused staying on task these things are real skills aren't they and yeah. th this group of individuals that untapped talent they actually bring that is a skill that they I'm, bring to an employer i'm sorry to interrupt everyone i've been really enjoying the conversation but we are fast running out of time so if i could just ask you to come up with some closing sort of statements that would be lovely but thank you very much for everything you've been discussing Brilliant. So thank you. Thank you uh, to Steve, to Amanda and to Tom for joining me today. Um, it is one of my favourite subjects about how we encourage employers to be more inclusive. And I think you've all been really eloquent in how you've you've promoted the programmes that you work on and, and why employers should consider that um, maybe being a little bit more diverse and, and thinking outside the box when it comes to recruitment. So thank you, everybody, for your time this afternoon. Mm, thank you, Maurice. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to all of you. It's absolutely lovely. So thanks, uh, Marie, obviously Stephen, Tom and uh, Amanda there. It's really clear, obviously, how beneficial uh, it is to employ diversely. Um, I believe we now have a discussion between Maurice, employer Mike and employee Ruben, all about how Ruben successfully secured work with Mike through the help of the Work and Health Programme. And I'm the Devon Cornwall and Somerset Regional Manager for CTEP Plus. 
and I'm delighted to have with me today, I'm delighted to have Mike and Ruben from Lineal. So um, just before we start, we just need to confirm that um, I work on the Work and Health Programme and currently that programme is supported by Department of Work and Pensions and the European Social Fund. So I'm going to move in and I'm going to introduce you to the fabulous Mike and, and Ruben. How are you both this afternoon? Fantastic. Thank you, Maurice. I'm OK. Uh, having minimal side effects from jab this morning. You've had minimal side effects. So somebody stuck a needle in your arm and you didn't kick them, Ruben. That was very, very good of you. Uh, nearly didn't. Nearly didn't. <laughs> nearly didn't. Right. OK. So uh, as we kind of spoke about before we started the recording, we, we want to celebrate um, the work that you do with Mike and, and what you the skills that you bring to Mike as an employer, at Ruben. So. Mike, can you just talk about who you are, what your organisation is and, and, and what you do as a company? Sure. OK, so good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are listening to this uh, video. It's afternoon here at the moment. Um, so my name is Mike Matthews. I'm the managing director of a company called Lineal Software. We don't just do software, as the title would suggest. We do all things IT, that is support, selling, refixing, uh, installing. Um, IT equipment, servers, workstations, laptops. Beginning of COVID, we had to set up something like 2,000 people uh, working from home in about six or seven days, which we managed to achieve. So we're quite a big company in terms of all things IT. But what we also do and have done for many years is, is create a bit of software called SQL Works. And what that software does is to manage your business. It's accounting, stock control, warehouse management, uh, CRM, uh, production control systems. It's a very big, complicated uh, piece of software, and it's used by large companies around the world. So that, that's effectively what I do. And I started off programming that language and ended up running the whole company. We have about 30 employees uh, based in North Devon. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So, Ruben, how long have you been working now for Mike? Was it been now like five years? That's right. It's, it's been a while, hasn't it? So you were initially referred on onto the, a programme called Work Choice. And, and I, I don't expect you to remember that because it was a while ago, Ruben. But can you can you tell me, can you remember how you first got engaged with, with CTEC and with CTEC Plus? Can you remember how you first came to meet us down at our office in Barnstable? It has been a long time indeed. Uh, I want to say it was just as part of I was referred to it as part of the uh, job seekers yeah originally yeah so I think you were at the time were you working with a disability employment advisor Ruben I believe so yeah was it and you were working with it in the job center and then he identified that you may need a little bit of, of help to find work um and he referred you on to us so before you went on to job seekers tell me about what what you just completed because i'm really interested in in the qualification that you've got i completed my bsc up at uh, plymouth university right in <clears throat> yeah yes. in computing it, so you, you you got a degree in computing so that's kind of my basic terms um and you you did that through petrock college i believe so did you go down to plymouth or did you do it all through the college in barnstable reuben i uh, did the two years to begin with up at petrock here and then the final year i went away for a year to do it at plymouth itself excellent stuff so when you came back from plymouth you knew that you wanted to work with computers and that you knew that you were good at working with computers so what help did you think that you needed to find a job so what support were you you originally thinking this is what i need to help me get a job a lot of the problems that i had were with essentially the initial contact and figure out how to react to people, how to find those avenues. Mm -hmm. Are you confident it's talking such... about, about your diagnosis, Ruben? I, I'm comfortable with it. I just, most of my knowledge is with other people. 
yeah okay so so you were originally diagnosed as as being on on the spectrum so that that you you know so things like communication don't you know you find them more more challenging definitely yeah different uh, they're a very different world view than a lot of people sometimes yeah. gets into a lot of misunderstandings yeah and 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 that kind of makes it it difficult doesn't it to read people and go through that interview situation and and i think from for me what i remember most was we just didn't know just what a talented programmer you were ruben because you know you didn't you found it it difficult to, to communicate just how good you were and actually we we just found it difficult to find out how good you were and, and kind of that that's where mike came into the situation um so mike can you just talk through a little bit about how how we initially engaged with you and and how we kind of put ruben under your radar oh that, that was really that was really quite funny i, I, I received a telephone call from from uh, from c tech wars plus in those days um, and I thought, here's another group of people who want to offload their staff onto me to get rid of their, uh, get their numbers up there. Well, well, give it a go. Um, I'm always uh, interested in seeing what opportunities uh, could be unearthed. Uh, and I seem to remember Ruben wasn't the only person you, you brought along. Um, we brought, we've seen some other people coming along and they're very shy, very introverted, very difficult to get, get into and, and engage with them. They, they don't even look at you. They they talk to you, uh, looking away from you, and it's disconcerting. So, it takes a lot of skill to talk to someone like that. Uh, but I found it quite easy, uh, interesting. Uh, but certainly, when Ruben turned up for his first interview, he was not engaging. But I did manage to talk to him and try to understand how to engage with him. Uh, and I said, well, okay, he's not quite ready for work because I couldn't really see any talent. And he went off somewhere else. I also saw another young lad. Um, was it Robert? Can you remember? Yeah. I, I think it was yep. Robert. Uh, Robert wouldn't say anything to anybody. Um, but once I sat him in front of a desk with some technical uh, work involved, he just started talking. But as soon as we moved away from the desk, he stopped talking. And then I suddenly realised that's what you've got to do. You've got to talk to talk to people like Reuben and Robert uh, in the language they, they understand mm -hmm. and come to them how they want. And that's I'm really grateful for CTEC for introducing those sort of people to me uh, with those sort of problems and issues. It's really easy to understand them. So you showed me Ruben. He went away. He went and did something else, which I won't spoil. Yeah. But then he came back again to have another crack at Lineal. Okay, I'll give him another crack, give him work experience, give him uh, a job interview even, just to get over that shyness to engage with someone rather than talking like this. Actually, you can talk to the camera, talk to someone. Uh, and through uh, in the interview, he showed me a piece of, I think Maurice showed me a piece of paper that the work he had done at his six weeks employment. That one piece of paper was enough to then say, this young man has got a job with me. And Absolutely. it cut through all of the um, ambiguity, the animosity, the uh, un 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 inability to understand. So his, his work output decided his fate. And it was fantastic. Brilliant. So, Ruben, I know, I know that we keep kind of going back into your memory, but can you remember where you did that placement and that little piece of work that uh, Mike was speaking about? Uh, that was with Eaton Aerospace. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I got into that work experience. I actually got into with the help of one of my mum's friends who, had, yeah. who was working there. So, so can they, you remember what you did? Because you did a, spe a specific piece of work there, didn't you? They had a system where they were, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much to go into, but essentially the department was about the safety in the area and they had a sheet to monitor the safety in each area. And they needed my help in essentially automating it into a dashboard showing stat stats and things. Yeah. So they know how well each area was doing. And I just remember, so the little bit of paper that Mike spoke about is, I think we took a printout. And, and Mike, I remember you saying that um, it was Excel, but it was Excel used in a way that very, very few people could use it. It, it showed a really high level understanding of, of IT skills. And I, I do remember shoving that little bit of paper under your nose going, Ruben's done this. And, and the conversation kind of immediately went, I'll give him a job. It was so indeed what, that. What was it? What was it? What did you see? 
I, I saw the ability to, to use Excel to demonstrate and give uh, the health and safety uh, statistics of a department by week with graphs, uh, revometers as I call them, and statistic numbers all in colour coded, all on a one piece of A4. Normally, uh, well, it was incredible. Normally, you see Excel was is is a row of numbers and maybe uh, a, a little graph to show how much you've done or how little you've done. But this was a piece of work that was all controlled by uh, Excel's programming language called Macros, and just showed such a level of skill that probably only 10% of the people who use Excel could even aspire to doing. So 90% of the people uh, who would use Excel wouldn't even believe it was Excel that created this product. Absolutely incredible. Brilliant. OK, so as an as an employer that's worked with us for a, a number of years now, Mike, so what is it about the support that you receive and you, you know, and, and what is is the value that that we we have in working closely together? Oh, either the fact you, you brought Rubens to my attention, that is the biggest thing you did. But that's that's just the initial uh, opportunity. And since then, uh, we've had other people from CTEC who are just as successful as Ruben, um, all with their own particular problems and issues. But yeah, you showed me what to do. I've had training on on how to deal with people with uh, with on the spectrum and how to really discuss their problems. And really, the first thing you have to do is actually listen to them and understand them and talk to talk to people like Ruben in a language that he understands. Uh, and there's very few people who can talk to Ruben. Uh, I feel I'm very lucky to be able to talk to Ruben and he uh, often jokes with me. I've taught him how to joke, make jokes uh, and be very much the social animal that, that he's turned into. Um, he has a wry cat grin and all of that has come around for the support from CTEC that they give me in, in, in looking at how to get the best out of people with, with these hidden disabilities. And they are hidden disabilities. Um, it's not saying that they, they're, they're physical, they're, they, they don't manifest themselves visually. Um, they are just there and you have to just don't write people off. And you gave me that inspiration really to to look deeper into how, what people actually have and to give them that chance. That's what CTEC gave me. Yeah, brilliant. And, and specifically, what does Ruben bring to the team? So what is it that Ruben can, can do? So we talked about that actually he can use Excel in a way that very, very few people can, can use. But what other skills has Ruben got that, that he brings to the team? OK, so. The skill that a, a database, it's databases that we program here, it's not gamings or videos or, or drawing programs. These, these are databases, these are numbers. So we talk here purely about data. And data has patterns. The program that we use uh, also use patterns. And he'll scroll through something and then look at something, go to another bit of code and just say, oh, there was a mistake back there. There was a comma missing 20 lines ago of code and it's affecting this. But he has ability to pull bits of data from other bits of the code uh, that not many people uh, can do. Uh, it's a great skill uh, that he has in ability to, for, uh, they call it pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. He will see those patterns and just say, well, your problem was 20 lines ago as you're scrolling through it. Um, it's very clever. So he has ability to do pattern recognition uh, and understand deep problems that I can't actually begin to understand. And so together with my business knowledge and his ability to program, um, it's a great combination. Brilliant. OK, so and, and Ruben, you know, obviously we've, we've spoken to Mike quite a bit, but can you remember, you, you know, obviously we, we we introduced you to Mike and can you remember kind of just how nervous you were when you had that first interview with Mike and, and what were some of those, those issues that you had at that time? Honestly, memory of that time is a little hazy for me. Right. <clears throat> I've developed a lot since then. Yeah, yeah. So I've managed to. So what's the best bit about working? What, what's good about working? There's several. There are several things. It's a. There's of course the money. Yeah. It, being able to being able to pave my own way through things. Mm -hmm. Earn my own keep. Yeah. But then also there's there are experiences in there. I think I'm always learning through it. Mm -hmm. And just it's yeah, got a nice amount of reassurance of my own abilities as well. Yeah, it must make you really proud when you hear Mike talk about you in that way and, and the skills that you have and that you bring to him. 
and we've e different. and we've definitely uh, managed to get Ruben talking to our clients rather than through a third party he talks to them directly. Not a brand new client because uh, that's definitely not many people have the ability to talk to brand new clients. But after we've discovered the client's needs and then um, then we introduce Ruben to that uh, conversation, does very well. He's yeah. been away on training courses uh, further towards London, away for several nights. And these are very technical training courses. He's also been into the uh, the worldwide conferences uh, for de uh, database developers. Uh, and after two or three days, I've been speaking to some of these delegates who can, and these are some of the experts in our field. And they turn around to me and says, Mike, you know, Ruben just gets it. Yeah. Uh, and they just get, and he beats the pants off people who've been doing that job for 15, 20 years, beats them hands down. Yeah. Um, and he's learned terrifically uh, how to uh, come out of his shell and, and get the very best out of him and for us. Brilliant. So if you were kind of talking to other employers, Mike, what would you say to them about engaging with, with us? You know, so why should employers kind of link up with organisations like, like CTEC Plus and look at having a more diverse workforce? Uh, that, that's a little bit harder because you have to look at your own business, look at the jobs that each of your members of staff have and, and break them down into little, little, little pieces. Look at what CTEC have to offer for the, for the people they have currently and just see if there are bits of the jobs that uh, your staff don't like to do or are not very good at doing it, but would suit somebody from uh, CTEC. Uh, you can job carve and take a little bit away from everybody's job role and make a whole new job that is absolutely deliriously happy for that other person. Mm. Um, the consistency, the repetition of people that come through CTEC is, is unmatchable uh, by your current employees in, in many cases. So I'd ask you to look at your current employees, look at their jobs, look at the job roles in, in parts and see if you can take bits away and put together a whole new job role that would suit somebody from CTEC down to the ground. And that's what we I've done it twice now. Um, they're absolutely happy. And the, the other staff in your company are also happier because those bits of the job which they weren't happy with are now being dealt with properly by someone who actually enjoys that, yeah. that job role. Yeah, brilliant. So what does the future hold for you, Ruben? You know, are, are you happy to stay working with, with, with Mr. Matthews, especially now that he said that you're a genius? I certainly have no plans of moving on to somewhere right. else at the moment. Good news, good news. And in fact, Ruben is now one of our mid-level programmers. Um, he now teaches uh, our juniors when they come along, apprentices when they come along. He teaches them, uh, and I never thought I'd see the day where he would actually be teaching them. But it's all very technical teaching, therefore uh, it, 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 it's what he likes doing. He said, this is how you do it, and this is what you get onto it. So he has a bright future and a long-term future at Lineal. If I were to go somewhere else, they'd crumble without me. They would, wouldn't they? They would. <laughs> we You've got would. over a barrel, Ruben, haven't you? You got he, them over he, a barrel. <laughs> that he does indeed. I hope he wasn't going to notice that bit. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, I really want to say thank you for your time today. Is there anything that, that either of you want to add, Ruben or Micah? Yeah, any kind of pearls of wisdom or any really good advice, Ruben, that, that you have to anybody who's maybe a little bit scared about thinking about going back to work? Uh, I can't think of any good way to describe it. It's just something to keep an, keep an open mind about. You, it may seem scary at first, but once people if once people understand you and you can get your head around things, yeah, you're probably going to be an asset. You are yeah. excellent advice. Excellent advice. And anything from you, Mike? No, I, I think I'd have to echo that from Ruben. Is from the employer's point of view, is stop and listen and understand. Uh, it's a quite different Ruben skills, and I speak to Ruben in a totally different way. But we, we get on so well together. I really enjoy his company. I enjoy everything he's learned. And he's definitely an asset to us. And I would employ anybody, so implore anybody was to look at the person that they've got coming from CTEC, look at their job roles and really uh, enjoy, but benefit from their uh, their productivity and their engagement with your company. Definitely enjoy it. Brilliant. So once again, you, you know, it, it's working and, and speaking to Mike and to Ruben that, that just kind of makes me so grateful. I'm, I'm so lucky to, to have met 
Ruben and to work with Mike you know you, your people that I'm, I'm proud of on a daily basis you know and, and I talk about you all the time Ruben about the amazing job that you do and Mike about the amazing employer that you are and, and you know how you've created roles and, and supported Mike and others behind Ruben you, you know to, to come to follow so thank you for your time today both um, and, and hopefully we'll catch up soon. Love you. Thanks very much, Maurice. Day. Thank you. Have a good day. Cheers, bye. Fantastic. Uh, what a lovely conversation there between Maurice, Mike and Ruben. Uh, that brings us to the end of our Celebrating Learning Disability and Inclusion feature. Uh, thank you all to all of our guests to joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about any of the services you've heard today, get in touch with us at Chaos and we can put you in touch with the right person or people. Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. It's always good to see some more being done about inclusion anywhere in the world. For now, though, we're going to go into a little bit of music before before we pop in to the next hour and I believe I'll be having Ross back with me which will be absolutely lovely so thank you very much guys have a nice day stay cool we'll be back with you in a little bit <laughs> <laughs>